sitting in this chair used to be Mike Craven, but we have, through the miracle of television, transformed him into Carter Yates, mm -hmm. writer for Dave Campbell's Texas Football. <laughs> Hi, Carter. How are you, Greg? I'm great, man. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what you are contractually obligated to do by writing the 2024 Gatefold feature, Dave Campbell's Texas Football. But thanks. Well, I appreciate it. Um, okay, so you wrote the Gatefold feature uh, featuring Gary Joseph and Jeff Joseph. Gary Joseph, of course, a legendary KD coach, uh, and his son Jeff Joseph, uh, the uh, now state champion head coach at Port and H's Groves. Um, so when we approached you, and, and I'll, I'll use the royal we, it was really me, I approached you, and I said, hey, we want you to write the Gatefold feature. We want it to be about Gary Joseph and Jeff Joseph. I'm curious what your initial thoughts were about taking on this challenge, which is, you know, it's your first cover story and mm -hmm. it's a substantive one. Well, one, honored. Mm -hmm. uh, grew up reading this magazine like most everyone who grew up in Texas loving high school football. Uh, so I knew when I was having the opportunity to work on the cover story, it was gonna take months of preparation and I, I didn't take it lightly. Now, I wasn't, I'm a DFW guy, so I wasn't personally aware mm -hmm. of Gary and Jeff Joseph, uh, but from what I heard about them, uh, larger than life figures mm -hmm. in Texas high school football, one for their accomplishments, but also for how stern Gary is, mm -hmm. is what I heard about. And when Mallory released that gatefold cover shoot video, and great job by her, but we were looking at the video and there was discussion amongst ourselves like, should we include the part of Gary Joseph saying, I didn't want to do this magazine Yeah. at the start of it? And some were like, oh, it sounds negative. And I thought it was sounded endearing mm -hmm. because my first interactions with Gary were, yeah, I didn't think I was deserving of this magazine. And when I talked to Jeff Joseph, he said, I think I thought it was weird. Y'all put me on the magazine. And as journalists, I think we kind of have a, a high BS meter, mm -hmm. like, oh, being fake humble. And that's not what happened. That's not them at all. They truly have accomplished so much, but never look for the accolades on that. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting because like for Gary Joseph, let's start with him for a moment. Well, Gary Joseph, of course, the legendary coach at Katie, he said that same thing to me. He's like, oh, well, there's a lot more deserving people than me to go on there. I'll do it because I want Jeff to be on it, his son. Mm -hmm. Gary Joseph is 265 and 26 as a Texas high school football head coach. Seems good. Okay, <laughs> 265 and 26 in 20 seasons as Katie's head coach. And yet, like, I'm, I'm curious when you sat down on the phone and you talked with Gary, uh, actually, no, in person, you went down yeah. to Katie uh, and you observed him, him coaching and you observed him running practice. When you sat down with him and talked with him, like, what were your impressions as somebody, I've known Gary Joseph for a yeah. while. You, this was kind of your first foray into the, into the Tigers then, so to speak. What, what, what were your impressions? Well, really, he walked around and did not say much. I mean, Katy High School, the off-season program, is a well-oiled machine. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have to say much. Uh, he gathered the team for a meeting, and I was standing on the outskirts of the team huddle, and I couldn't hear what he was saying. He's a quiet, very mm -hmm. soft-spoken. He gets on the football field and in the game, and that huge personality he has comes out. But it just showed me how you change throughout your coaching career. Like the Gary Joseph that takes over at KD, not takes over, but is the defensive mm -hmm. coordinator at KD in 1982 is far different in coaching mentality and style than the Gary Joseph that there is now. But he is the same. He is the same guy. Mm -hmm. And I think he is able to do this now because the program almost runs itself where you walk in the field house and it's nine state championship trophies it's nfl jerseys of former alums hanging there and it's like he is katie football mm -hmm. so he doesn't need to be the loud screaming type as much anymore it is it's it's, it's remarkable the success he's had there and and to your point he's a guy like I, i'll never forget this is a couple of years ago we went down i think it was when he was going to the THSCA Hall of Honor and the pickle I think you were there I was we were shooting videos and like everyone you were supposed to the inductee was supposed to come they were supposed to bring like two other people to help uh like to talk about the inductee like as, as color uh about for these videos we were shooting so we go on there and then walked Kerry Joseph in exactly like that where he's wearing his red Katie polo and his, and his khakis and in walked two assistants wearing red kitty polo, red kitty polos and khakis. I mean, it is a machine what he's built there. Yeah. And I think that is what makes obviously his success remarkable. And now at with Jeff Joseph and him becoming, let's be honest, one of the rising stars in Texas high school football coaching these days. 
how much in your interactions with, with Jeff, what similarities, what differences, how do, you, how do you draw those two guys, the father and son, apart in their styles? So a big theme of the story is, because uh, we talk about Eddie Joseph too, who mm -hmm. was the president of the THSCA, Gary's father. Uh, Gary and Eddie are clones, mm -hmm. right? They're the drill sergeants, uh, they are stern, they are no nonsense, they have no hobbies other than coaching and parenting. <laughs> Jeff Joseph has always been a little more like his mother mm -hmm. in terms of he has traveled to 30 different countries, he's a big hunter, fisherman, like outdoorsman. Uh, so I would say Jeff on the surface is a little more chill when you talk to him. Mm -hmm. And then I spent two days at PNG's off-season program, and he would run around, not like yelling like Gary, like not a not a big yeller, but if you walked from drill to drill, that fire ignited. Yeah. Or there was three black Nike shoes left out after practice the last day, and the kids had to run three times down and back on the football field because of three pairs of shoes left out. So there's flashes of Gary mm -hmm. that he has. And you see kind of why they're so successful. Because P&G just won their first state championship since 1975, and they're worried about black Nike shoes yeah. left outside. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a remarkable story, and I really hope people will, will pick it up. Uh, when you got to the end, and you got done with all your interviews, and got done with, with that, um, I'm curious if there, was, if there was anything that surprised you. If there's anything that like when you were going through that you found, you, that maybe you had a preconceived notion of what you were about to learn, that surprised you by the time you got to the end of it? It's mm. a really good question, Tepper. Thanks, guys. <laughs> for Hard hitting journalism. Professional journalist, <laughs> capital J. I have a newspaper journalism degree uh, on purpose. That's a brag. So I talked to a lot of people in and around the Katie program. I talked to former players, I talked to former principals that became the stadium announcers. And what I was surprised about was almost how highly everyone spoke of Gary Joseph. And Usually when you talk to former players, like, oh, you know, coaches, he was very intimidating, mm -hmm. right? And it seems like there's nothing but nice things that everyone around this community uh, has to say about this man and this family. And I would also say, uh, I'm surprised by how Gary Joseph almost seemed more excited for his son winning mm -hmm. the state championship than he was winning the state championship. Uh, we have a picture in the magazine that runs. It's one of my favorite pictures, I think. And uh, I hope that comes across in the yeah. story. It, it, it was. It, it, it's so for a guy who, who is um, uh, careful and intentional with his emotions, um, generally speaking. I mean, I've seen him raise state championship trophies at Katy. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he didn't have tears in his eyes then. But when Jeff did it. Yep. at PNG, it was a different ball game. It was a different ball game. And, and I'll just speak as a father, like, yeah, like, I absolutely get that. Like, I can, I can, I can totally see that. Um, I am glad that he agreed to do the cover shoot. I'm very glad. I too. know that it was, <laughs> uh, there, was, there was some touch and go thing about doing that, but I, I, I now I understand, so the cover's a, a, a tightly kept secret. And I, but we saw Jeff Joseph, Pickle back me up on this. Yeah. At the, at the Hall of Fame. Uh, I showed Texas him. Hall of Fame. <laughs> we showed him the cover, and his response was pretty good. He, uh, he, was, he was very pumped. Very, yeah. very pumped. I looked at him, and he came over to say hi and kind of dap us up, and I was like, you want to see something real fast? I was like, but you can't tell anybody that you saw yeah. this. And he goes, yo, that's sick. Yeah. And so I, don't, I haven't seen Gary's reaction yet. I'm sure it was much in Gary fashion. Like, you look <laughs> good, son. And then yeah. that was probably it, but Jeff was pumped about yeah. it. It's, uh, it, it, it's always an honor to, to put together the, the high school or the, the gatefold cover, which usually goes to the high school um, because we do have so many different options. Like because of the, yeah. like there's so many different stories that we can tell, but, but this, this felt like the right one. The other thing about it that I think is great is that you want to talk about two big, crazy fan bases. Yep. P and G oh, folks yeah. and Katie folks. They love they're going to be football. They're going to be blowing up your Twitter. It's at Carter underscore Yates, I think, on Twitter, right? 16. 16 uh, <laughs> on Twitter. So make sure you blow him up. Was that your number when you were a quarterback? Please tell me yes. No, that was my number in Little League football. Oh, even better. Oh, that yeah. rocks. Pee Wee football, Carter Yates. Uh, but here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Oh, another reason why I think that, that you, uh, you, you vibe with, with Gary Joseph a lot. You were a quarterback at Frisco. Yep. What kind of offense are you guys running? Wing T. You're running a wing T. 
Gary Joseph's offense, now he's a defensive guy to be clear, but his offense has not changed in 20 years. Okay? Run the darn ball. Single back, we're <laughs> going to run the ball, and then they are going to be, I swear, Katie's the best play action team in America. Like that, like the, when they pull it, it's just like they've got dudes running free because you have to load up against it. And I, I felt like Oz oh, is a good fit for a guy who ran a wing T yeah. offense. The running joke in the program is that the players from 40 years ago could still call the play. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have no doubt about it. I saw a lot of similarities between Gary Joseph and my old high school head football coach. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Um, he's Carter Yates. You can read his fine work on texasfootball.com. And, of course, the gatefold feature of the 2024 summer edition of Dave Campbell's Texas Football featuring Gary Joseph and Jeff Joseph from Katy and Port Natchez Groves, respectively. And you can get your copy of the 2024 summer edition of Dave Campbell's Texas Football by going to texasfootball.com slash subscribe. It would make Carter and his parents very happy if you did. Is that true? Very happy. Yeah, okay. It would make them very happy. So do it for Carter and his parents. <laughs>